All right, let's look at this problem called find median from data stream. Let's have a read. It's quite a big problem. <clears throat> median is a middle value in an ordered integer list. If the size of the list is E1, there is no middle value and the median is the mean of the two middle values. For example, for array equals to 2, 3, 4, the median is 3, correct? For example, for array equals to 2, 3, the median is exactly correct. Implement the median finder class. Median finder initializes the median finder object. Uh, add num adds the integer num from the data stream to the data structure and find median returns the median of all elements so far. Answers within 10 to the power minus half of the actual answer will be accepted. Okay, so it's double median uh, because if, if you have to do by two in some cases. All right, so this is one example and there are some follow-ups as well but okay i'll ignore the follow-up but let's just read if all integer numbers are in the stream are in the range 0 to 100 how would you optimize if 99 percent of all integers are in the stream are in the range 0 to 100 how would you optimize and so on all right finding median from a data stream let's think what uh, we would do so in general when it says data stream and you have to find the median one thing that comes to mind is is i want to be able to find median i want it to be able to um sort of sort the uh like what the best way would be if i get the new number i can add it in a sorted fashion and if i can add it in a sorted fashion then i just have to find the median and find the median in a sorted array is quite basic right you get the middle two elements or the middle element and depending on whether the uh, whether it is odd or even uh, we just uh, find the median now the problem is it's a stream that means you can add infinite numbers right how do you handle uh, the stream like how can we keep maintaining the median i think that's where the challenge is perhaps is there a limit on the total number of elements that we can get? Um, maybe that is something that we need to figure out. Does it say anything in the constraints? This is what it says in the constraints. At most five times 10 to the power four calls will be made to add num and find median, right? So this is the maximum number of calls that you will get. So this is the maximum number of elements essentially that you would get. <clears throat> now, would you save all of these elements is my question. Uh, there will be at least one element in the data structure before calling find median, okay? So that is good. Uh, it's, it's ensuring that that's the case. And the follow-up sort of says that what if the numbers are in a specific range instead of like being in this big range? If they're in a specific range, how would you optimize? <sighs> What's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is that I only need the middle element, right? I do not need uh, I do not need uh, all the elements that I've seen so far. So I'm only interested in finding out if when a new element is added, uh, it causes my middle element to change, right? So I am um, thinking even if you save all the elements, like how do you keep uh, adjusting sort of your array to keep it sorted? Like even if you do like a BST and you save it in a sorted fashion, then still you have to find the middle, right? Uh, your BST might not be balanced. Will you balance your BST to make it sort of uh, a heap is something that can tell you the minimum and the uh, maximum. Uh, you don't really uh, so when you are when you are splitting your sorted array around the middle, the only thing that you are interested in is that the left 
part is all smaller and the right part is all greater so in the left part you want the maximum guy in the left part in the right part you want the minimum guy all right so uh my approach and it's also stemming from probably having seen this problem in the past is to use two heaps or two priority queues uh, one being a min priority queue other being a max priority queue so for the left side you'll use a max priority queue for the right side you'll use a min priority queue will always ensure that the either their sizes are equal or maybe one of them is uh, is like uh, or, or the different basically the difference in the sizes of the two queues are less than or equals to one so when the first guy comes you will add it in any of the priority queue when the second guy comes you will add it into the uh, second priority queue zero doubts but but um what if the second guy that comes is lesser than the previous guy then it has then it can't go into the right queue then it has to come into the uh, first queue only and the second guy has to be removed and moved to the second queue right so let's come to the whiteboard and try and do that sort of an analysis after having decided on trying to use two priority queues so what we are saying now is hold on uh, yeah so what we are saying is we will use uh, two priority queues like this and this this is my max priority queue and this is my min priority queue and let's look at the examples right so the example that is given to us first is that you are adding one so okay so when i add one i will add one to this priority queue without any problem so i add one to this priority queue and then the next thing is i am going to add two so when i'm adding two this priority queue already has one element so i'll add two here and i can add two here because it's greater than this so the constant that we have to maintain is that uh, the constant that we have to maintain is that all elements in max pq are less than equals to all elements in min pq right now i'm wondering it's really whether it's really a max pq or not because uh, yeah it is so uh, so what i'm going to do is is the max guy in my max priority queue should be less than equals to the min guy in my min priority queue right that is something that we have to maintain and we have to also maintain that length of uh min pq minus length of max pq it should be like absolute of them difference should be less than equals to one like either they are equal or they are differ by one if you can maintain these two then we'll always have the middle element from the top of these two priority queues right and based upon their sizes so let's look at this uh, further example so one two is clear after that you have to find the median the so both the priority queues length are equal that means you take the top elements on both of them and you just get the uh, like you just get the average of them then there is another element which is added which is 3 now when the element is added what do you check you probably check hey is this element greater than the uh, this guy or is it lesser than this guy one of those two is something that you will, you're going to check right if it is greater than this guy then it's clearly going to be added into this priority queue right so you will add 3 here and now yes now these two differ by uh, down this guy is one length more so now when you look for median you'll just return the top guy from here and that will be the median so that seems to work for me let's try and build an algorithm based on based on this approach 
so we come to code so we're saying we'll maintain two priority queues in the median finder constructor uh, so we will say in the class we'll have two priority queues uh, so priority queue of integer i'll call it i'll just call it left priority queue and right priority queue right so i'll just i'll just call it left queue So in left queue, I want the maximum guy. So it has to be in sort of a descending. Uh, so here I will give, uh, if I get a comma b, I'll give uh, like b minus a, right? And let's get the right queue as well. So for right queue, you'll use this as a min priority queue and you'll get uh, a, B is a minus B, right? So, so that's one thing that you do. Now for find median, that's the easy bit. So it says find median will be called only if uh, um, it has at least one element. So I check if, uh, um, If their sizes are equal, then you will do uh, return. Now you here you have to do so you go to double um, left q dot peak and you do So now when you typecast both to double, they should be double, right? And double plus double, when you do like this, and you do divide by two, it should be a double. And else if your left is bigger, Then you're going to just do return uh, some issue here, I think. Yeah, this is better. So then you're going to return and else you're going to return peak. So this is fine median. Now add a median finder. I mean, you could have put these in the median finder, but uh, this is also fine. Add num is where I'm gonna have to do some, I'm gonna have some problems. So one is if both are empty, right? Then you just add it in the left queue. So if, uh, Then you, I just add it to the left queue without even thinking. Now there could be a case where one queue is amp there are two more, three more cases, which is uh, left queue is empty and right queue is not empty and, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so how do we handle that? Like the second case, well, first time you add into the first, into any one guy, then second time, the second number that you get, you might have to do two things. One is either you could directly add it into the, you could directly add it into the left queue or Or you, uh, 
I am able to think of the issues. There are different issues, it seems to me. Uh, so one one of the case obviously is is if uh, let's do this. Uh, there are multiple issues. So one is is that if 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 there already is a difference in size, right? Maybe you adjust later. Maybe first you add where it should belong. Meaning that if it is, um, yeah, I think you just add to whichever queue it belongs, right? If it is lesser than the uh, left guy's maximum, then it will go into the left. It is greater than the right guy's uh, minimum, then it will go into the right guy. And if your after adding, if your queue size becomes bigger, then you will add adjust, which is completely fine. Um, I'm thinking about the case where you do not have something to check with, meaning that hmm. Can uh, one of the questions that comes is, is can this have duplicates? And I guess yes. Why not? Right? Duplicates is a very valid uh, thing to happen. So if duplicates happen, then so um, this is the logic that I am trying to come up with, which is um, I'm not removing elements, and given that I'm not removing elements, my left should never be empty. Fair enough, right? No, my left will never be empty. So if the uh, I'm just gonna do if left queue is empty, that means I'm gonna limit it, right? If my left is empty, then just add it in the left. That means it's just the first guy that I'm adding, right? And if left is not empty, then you're gonna check if uh, left, if the number is less than uh, left q dot peak. If that seems to be the case, if the number is smaller than that, then you add it in the left q. Else you add it in the right queue. Now, if after adding it to the left queue, if if its size increases by two, right, uh, then there's a problem. Then you have to adjust. Then you do. Uh, right q dot add left q dot pull right as simple as that and similarly you do that same thing here as well if your right q size One question that I have is, can I always add into the left queue without even checking? Like, why not just add into the left queue? And then if its size is increasing, then add it into the right queue. I mean, yeah, that is also, uh, that's also fine. Uh, but you know that it, it is belonging to the right queue. Then why, why do this nonsense of, uh, you can avoid few of these uh, balancing acts, but okay. So if right queue size is equals to equals to uh, left queue dot size plus two, 
you'll do left q dot add right q dot pull right and that's it i think i am happy with this let's run and you get the wrong answer to begin with let's see what the issue was and uh, expected was 1.5 you returned 1 expected was 1.5 sorry expected when expected was 1.5 you returned 1 when expected was 2 you returned 1.5 okay so that means um when you returned 1 obviously you have added uh, so the input is this so you have added 1 you have added 2 and then you're calling the median and then when you call the median uh it should have done 1 plus 2 by 2, right? And so left q dot peak, right q dot peak. Uh, this is when their sizes are equal. So that means their sizes are not equal. Um, so in this very basic case, uh, if num is less than left q dot peak, where when you're adding 2, because 1 is definitely added. So when you're adding 2, 2 is less than 1, answer would be no. So we'll go into the else part and we will add into the right queue. And if the right queue is dot size, it will now 1 equals to equals to left queue dot size, which is 1 plus 2, 3, answer is no. So you won't do this. And so uh, clearly your left queue should have an element, your right queue should have an element. The sizes should match. Um, I don't know why it's not returning. Maybe what you do is, is you print your queues here. So you do all right. So you print out your left queues and right queues, and we'll see what happens after that. So So the find median called two times. Your right queue has both one and two. When did you insert uh, one into your right queue? And then so there is one, there is one, two. And then when three was added, yeah, somehow your left had one which is where uh, the problem is essentially when you added one you added it into the both queues it seems like to me into your left queue as well as right queue which is probably because of uh, this okay all right run code now and it is accepted let's remove the prints and submit and it is accepted. All right. 